Good morning, folks. It has begun. The top story you're going to hear in today's show might not seem like a big deal, but the first state-level crop disaster due to the predicted extreme weather swings coming out of winter has occurred. Today, we get a glimpse of the future. But we begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star very calm once again on March to solar minimum. But with the Sun, Mercury, and Venus in a line, we did indeed see sunspots defying the Earth-facing quiet effect and form in a perfectly Earth-facing position. Whether they fire solar flares or not remains to be seen. We'll be watching closely, and remember to turn on the solar flare notifications on the app. We could tell a lot of you guys didn't have them on for the last round of solar flares. Anyway, we were also mentioning that current dark coronal region facing Earth set a minor quake watch, but... We weren't sure if it was a true coronal hole with connected IMF to Earth. Looking like it probably was, and indeed in just a minor way, as a 6.24 shock and 6.3 main shock struck southeastern Alaska. No damage being reported. Lucky. Quick reminder that since it is a new month, the contest prize jumps to $350 over at QuakeWatch.net. Anyone, even free members, can participate in the contest, and remember, upgrades to the site are coming soon. Coming now to our articles, we see a new Nova outburst. Right column shows the brightening over just a few minutes and which had a peak period lasting about a day. Very cool, and what a tremendous spike on the light curve. Something major definitely happened in deep space. Caltech has delivered a fascinating animation of how deep seismic breaks can propagate up to rip a fault line at the surface. If you've heard of the Earth opening up, swallowing something, and then closing back after the quake, they say it's real and that's how it happens. A quick note, if water can reach the mantle in mid-ocean ridges where crust is formed as material only pushes upward from the Earth's interior, then in normal faults and especially oceanic subductions where the material is pushing down, every concept of water reaching great depths will have no trouble whatsoever. Hope you caught that. But even if not, it's okay. This is more important. The phrase from our long-range forecasts, states worth of crops lost, should begin to come to mind for anyone who has heard our predictions of Earth's future. The problem with the one-sided story of climate change is mostly one of under-inclusion, both in the variables and the possible extremity of future events, especially the cold ones. Two billion dollars in wheat potentially down the drain, and it took just a few hours. I know it's the beginning of one story, but welcome to the future. That storm is finally getting its danger offshore to the east today while a system approaches Cascadia and another storm system aims at the center of the country. Yes, again. Other major concern is off a powerful Antarctic low whose convergence line takes on the South Island of New Zealand today. Eyes open there. Planetary geometry for May is posted to suspiciousobservers.org in the deeper look section. Looking like it's going to be a rough month starting near the end of this week. We've got the rest of the world's weather and shots of our star to close. It's 5.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.